What's good? Welcome back, everybody, to Moon or Dust episode 13. Uh, it's going to be a weird one this week. Honestly, this week was not good at all for both crypto and NFTs. I mean, there's obviously there's always going to be meme coins uh, that come out of the woodwork and perform well. But overall, I don't know, like Ash and I were talking about it behind the scenes. And uh, I don't know why I'm streaming. Let me get that off. Yeah. And, and the market's just been kind of boring this week. Like even NFTs, we were prepping today's show. And NFT wise, I was just like, man, there's really not much to like new. I mean, there's there's mints and stuff that didn't perform well. Um, so a lot of things haven't been doing as well. And it could be I don't want to use the word depressing, but it's really it's not as fun, you know, as when everything is full sending. So it's going to be an interesting episode. We're going to talk about NFTs. We're going to talk about tokens um, and what to look for in the future. Like what plays are we setting up to do? Angel investments, meme coins, whatever it is. But before that, Ash, how you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, this week sucked. There, it felt really, if it, it felt weird. Like last week, there were a lot of coins, like meme coins and stuff, that did well. And uh, it just feels like NFTs are. I mean, even ordinals. It's weird because, like, if you think about it, it was only what three weeks to a month ago when you had that crazy Node Monkeys run and OMB hit like 1.7 Bitcoin. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely been like a slow past couple like it, it's it's gone down over the past couple weeks in terms of NFTs and ordinals. But um, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been weird. It was tough to it was tough to find a lot of good, interesting stuff. But there is kind of like you said, like angel investments, like there's still stuff to do. Yeah, I mean, there's still NFTs. I, I made an NFT video yesterday, or I posted it for yesterday, and it got significantly less views than my recent crypto videos. Like, I made two airdrop videos. One got 25K views. One of them's at 10K, and it still did decent, but I'm just looking at the metrics behind the scenes for YouTube, and it's really not the same for NFTs. It's always been like that. The NFT keyword just gets a lot less searches. It really doesn't perform as well, but... What, now that I'm doing kind of both uh, on my channel and I'm seeing the difference, it's like it's very obvious. Uh, welcome everybody to the channel. We got Keiko in the audience. We got somebody chilling that nub that I know. Ash, you were in on uh, nub. We chill. got uh, Dav in the audience. What's good, buddy? Max. Oh, what's up? Yeah, we got Bosu. Uh, we got Kevin from Bosu, dude. What's good? I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, calm before the moon. I hope so, sir. Even crypto this week, dude, was all over the place. We had a, a crash and then uh, Jerome Powell saving the market a little bit, talking about rate cuts and stuff. The, the stock market also had a little rally. Um, you know what I missed? Dur the one thing I noticed during the bear market that I found funny, every because it was so boring, like we had nothing to do and everybody was just waiting for the market to pump. I know. We would all tune in to every single speech of Jerome Powell and watch it as if like, you know, we were at, at uh, whatever we were, we worked at BlackRock, you know, we were on our Bloomberg's like watching it. We were all these experts talking about rate cuts and stuff. And now I feel like nobody cares. Nobody talks about it. We're just posting about meme coins and stuff. I miss that dude. I felt like a finance bro. Like I felt like I would put it on my TV and stuff. And I don't know, it was a different vibe. No, that's actually so funny that you say that because I thought about that the other day because everybody during the bear market, they would always tweet. They'd be like, they'd be like, foam C is today. Like, oh no, what's going to happen? And it was like, the market did actually react pretty, like pretty significantly to those events during the bear too. I feel like it doesn't matter as much right now. Yeah. I mean, we care about it less, you know, I think a lot of, especially traditional markets, they watch it and crypto clearly reacts to it, but yeah, we're just not paying attention to it because there's so much, there's stuff to do now. Like there's actual, there's investments to make, there's meme coins dropping. Uh, so we, we just have other stuff to pay attention to, but it's good, I guess, to keep track of just for the overall macro or the, the overall, I know like Elio trade still covers this kind of stuff. Um, maybe not recently as videos, but he'll, he'll bring it up. Uh, as opposed to the type of videos he did before. Uh, nice to see you too, sir. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, so I mean, let's let's get to it. So this week, dude, there was like a, there was mints. I mean, it's not like there wasn't mints that happened. Um, let me get the screen on here. But uh, we had what's the first one I got on the list? We had Sigma. This was an Ordinals mint. Uh, I don't actually know what the mint price is, but I dude, I like the art zero three nine. 
point zero zero three nine. Okay, so they're under mint price. I mean, I think it's just because they all look like the same, right? It looked cool on the surface, like when they were showing it, uh, but looking at them, it's just they're they're all the same. So, um, yeah, I guess I don't really see too much of the appeal. I still like them, like they look cool, but why would you, you know, go buy one? Uh, there was this art project, Frank. I don't know if you you saw this one. Uh, a lot of people were upset on the over allocation that they had. I had whitelist and I. I didn't realize it was live, um, so I completely missed it. This was 0.014 to mint, so it's it's above mint price, and it's cool. It's it's art on Bitcoin. They're doing this whole storytelling concept. Uh, I really vibe with these. Like I like how these look, um, and it's I like that they're still above their mint price. You know, like people <laughs> <laughs> like art on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a great place for art because it's all on chain. Uh, so yeah, the the positive that I have to say is that it's still above its mint price yeah that's actually so funny that you said that yeah i heard about this super late but um i saw you tweet about it yeah um i wanted to make sure we secure uh, the whitelist and everything so <laughs> dude lately and i'm not saying that frank that frank did this to me he was super chill i just told him I like know, yeah dude I, I like your art project i know i've been getting what you're about to say i've been getting held hostage from projects like for tweets. Oh, you want your people to go on the whitelist? Do you want? And I'm just like, yeah, for, dude. At one point, I'm just gonna blow up a project. I'm just gonna drop. Yeah, and uh, Frank did not do this to me. Just, just FYI. <laughs> it's just we were in. We, we had an interesting chat. Some other projects have been really holding me hostage for a video, and I'm like, you know what, dude? What other project is you gave all these people whitelist? All these alpha groups, all these NFT collections. What? How many videos did they do for you? Like, give me a, a shit ton of spots. Then, if you're gonna hold me hostage for a video, that's how I'm feeling. Like, especially with how NFTs are performing right now, like, wouldn't you want as many people on your whitelist anyways? I don't know. It's it's getting weird, and it's really triggering me. Like, I'm going to blow up on a project at one point, and it's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah, and you know what else is funny is, like, in the collab process right now, it's, like, what what's really funny to me is how there's, like, all these people that claim to be, like, marketing experts and, like, all this stuff and whatever, and yet... Within the past month, miraculously, every everyone's asking for a tweet. Everyone's asking for a partnership tweet. Why was nobody asking us for partnership tweets a month ago? And for the past like year, nobody ever asked for anything like I mean, obviously, like, you know, they would want like coverage in a video or something like that. But it's like, why is it that my entire timeline is just all it's all like partnership tweets now? Yeah, I think people got really drained from the whole threads and stuff. I mean, most people don't read threads anyways. So it's like, what, what's the use? People got really drained from the threads. I'm still getting asked a lot like, hey, can we do an AMA? Can we do a Twitter space? Dude, I got so burnt out Twitters. I just don't do them. Any I just straight up say no. Like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not interested in an hour conversation about your project when I can just look over at your website in like 30 seconds and then... Even for viewers, like, wouldn't you much rather watch like a one minute video or or like a recap if you watch my videos, like a, a one minute recap throughout a longer video versus tuning into a space for an hour and hearing the same questions that you've heard a million times? Like, don't you yeah. just want to know the bullet you struck coffee on yourself? Did I just spill coffee on myself? <laughs> I guess. No, but you're you're actually right. Uh, I I think that like a lot of these people, they're like, they're like, no, join our AMA for an hour so that we can tell you the same thing that you've heard a hundred million times from every other project. Like I haven't been on, I, I le legitimately have not been on an AMA where I've like actually said to myself, wow, this is different than everything else that I've ever heard. And I'm with you. It's like, I would much rather sit down and watch a video from you a one, to, one to two minutes, like on each subject. And it's like, go over six projects. Just yeah. like run through it real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Seven, Here's what you need to know. Boom. Here's why it's yeah. bullish. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You already do all the research. Like I do the research when we do these videos anyway. So it's like we put the most important stuff in. The only thing that I would say is that I do sometimes like to hear from the founder because depending on how well they're able to arc articulate themselves in the project, it will let me know as to whether or not I should be like a little bit more or less bullish on it. That's like the only thing is that like I do like to hear from from founders. But beyond that, like if if I'm trying to hear something, it's like it doesn't need to be like an hour long AMA. Yeah. 
this, um, Octan, what's up? Uh, thank you for joining. He says, yeah, but it's part of the marketing. I get that. Like, they, you know, they, yeah, they promote, hey, we're doing a space. With, you know, it's funny, dude. There was some projects uh, and they would be like, and I, I just wasn't bullish. And they would be like, oh, but we went on this show. Or like, we went on Rug Radio. And I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> do you think anybody's going to care? Anybody's going to be like, should I mint, th mint this? Oh, they went on Rug Radio. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to mint this. Like nobody cares. Like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a strange one, but yeah, no, a lot, a lot of people ask for the, the partnership tweets, which I don't mind. It's, it's very, uh, I'll do it. It's an easy lift. And they give you, if they give you custom art, like I have a few right now who made me custom art. I haven't posted yet. Some of their art is dope. Like lucid made me a dope gorilla, dude. <laughs> I'm just like, let's go. Um, yeah, there's some projects that do really cool stuff. Um, Ash, get yourself together, man. HB says clean that shirt off. <laughs> I don't know when um, it happened. That's so weird. Whatever. Anyway. Um, Frank Ordinals have not imported the whitelist winners from some. Yeah, I mean, some that happens. Uh, maybe, you know, sometimes community. Dude, it's happened where I was a bit late. And when it comes to Magic Eden Mints, they have a deadline. If you miss it, too bad. You're not getting on it. Um, so there's there's sometimes other reasons behind it. But I think it was over allocated anyway. So the odds of hitting uh, were low. Uh, what was I going to press enter here? Oh, yeah, this one. Pepe Ordinals, dude. It looked so bullish. Free Mint. Their Twitter looked great. Like, I was so bullish on their Twitter. I completely missed the Mint. Dude, I got to get my schedule in order for Mints. Like, this, the branding looked really cool, dude. I thought it was going to be, like, really nice art. And I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fan of these. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, pull up your screen. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was the, the Twitter. Like, the branding on the Twitter, I found it looked cool. And then, I don't know, it was... It was these. I'm really not a fan of these. And like one of the criticisms that people were saying was they hadn't even, because they were going to launch a coin during the whole pre-sale meta, meta uh, which they say was planned. Like they showed evidence that it was planned, uh, but they hadn't previewed the art. And like, I don't know. I really don't vibe with these. It doesn't seem like much effort was put in. They just changed the color and added a couple extra trades. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Not they're They're not like different enough. Like a lot of them seem very yeah. the same. And uh, the other thing is that I don't, so we did a collab with them too. Uh, I don't really love when projects launch and I don't know anybody that's on the team. Mm, I, I guess, but if, I mean, there's a lot of a non, you mean like a collab? Man? Like I dealt with them through Twitter, right? I'm sure you did the same. Or you had yeah, a collab with that's them. What I mean. It's like, yeah. I, I want to know like generally who's behind a team. Like, I don't love the whole, like, Nakamigos style, like, oh, we have no founder, like, we, nobody knows who we are at all. But those were stealth-launched, right? Or not stealth-launched, but that was just, like, a mint, right? There was no whitelist for those? I don't remember. In that case, I don't mind. If it's just, like, launched, I don't mind. But, yeah, when it's whitelist and you, like, you have a, an ongoing conversation with them, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, Keikyo's saying they look like E.T. Yeah, they do, dude. Yeah, they do um let me pull up more here uh there was dude i was i would talk to, i talked to cm sometimes like hey what projects do you think are the most bullish and somebody you know base nfts were really popping off now there was been a, a huge correction in them but uh everybody was telling me base waifus and dude it didn't even hit 0.01 i guess because the the gas fees are so low uh, people were willing to flip it um Has, have there been any good nfts on base besides yeah, puck, puck. Puck, puck puck so base fellas and pock pock and that's it um no no there there's um oh, what's it called kenick posts about it a lot it's like the one where they're making the pass geisha or the gaia's yeah yeah gaia's that one yeah. went to like almost two eth dude yeah that was that was crazy i'm gonna give a shout out to potter because potter literally called those at under point one and he was telling people to buy them, like not just like, oh, in chat, like, hey, guys, maybe look at these. He was like, buy these under point one. He I don't know how the I don't know how he knew. I really don't, because that was like a really good call on his part. Did you do the like, did you mint any of these? No, no, I minted like I forget how many 45, maybe a bit more. All right. There was a token you could trade them in for a token called the flies token. Uh, that was a cool idea that somebody did. And then um, X copy actually tweeted about it or something so it kind of gave it a bit more legitimacy um we'll talk about mints but somebody here asking about uh 
Mofu Mofu MC. Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. I did the um, I did a tweet for them where it, like I they had everybody tweet out this pass thingy. Um, so I have whitelist for it. Uh, yeah, that one looks cool. It's uh, anime and then music side, and there's like a legit company behind it. Uh, so that's a cool looking one. I've well, missed we'll, a lot of mints, personally. Uh, it didn't mint yet. I hope it didn't mint. No, yet. no, it didn't. But <laughs> okay, I'm saying okay. like I've missed a lot of mints recently because it's like it's just weird. Like there just hasn't been like too much that has really gotten me excited. Don't go full screen on me. I spilled on myself again somehow. I don't know what's going on with me today. I look. <laughs> How do I get you up there? All right, now I'm completely gone. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like I just I know that there is like a list of stuff that is exciting, which we are going to go over. I just feel like the past month was just, it was all coins. Like, I feel like it was just mainly coins and pre-sales. Leave me alone, dude. Leave me alone with my shirt. All right. Yeah, agreed. Go. Agreed. Uh, there, there's this right now, or Pepe's. I saw they tweeted. They basically gave whitelist if you hold at random, if you hold certain uh, ordinal collections. And I didn't or get one for my OMB. Like, fuck. Did you try <laughs> Well, no, it was given randomly. Yeah, yeah, but did you try? Here, I'll yeah, send you a link. Check. Okay, okay. No, I tried yeah, I, I got yeah. one, but I have like five of the or six of the ordinals that they. Um, so I, I hit just on one, right? Um, th there's too many NFTs for them to give everybody. There's only five thousand, and just OMBs is over five thousand, so it wasn't one to one. They did like fifteen collections or something. Uh, so that one's live. Uh, it's worth checking out. If you go on Magic Eden, you could see down here, it uh, it's on the launch pad. So you could just check out if you have a whitelist. Uh, in general, though, um, like you said, Ordinals has calmed down. A lot of the projects did start to go down. Uh, you know, Node Monkeys are back to 0.5. Puppets are pumping. Dude, I'm glad these Rune Pups are back up. They went like sub 0.01. I bought around here, 0.02. So I was down Me like too. 50% on these. Me yeah. too. I didn't know you bought these there. I had yeah. three, and okay, I, I got two. I held those. I felt so stupid. Same, uh, but I should have doubled down. <laughs> That's always the strat. If you still like, I, dude, I still believe in ruins, uh, which is I think is going to be a big narrative, and these are going to play a part. So I should have doubled down. But I know they also have a, I guess, a BRC twenty pup, and a lot of people were buying that instead. Yeah. So um, it kind of, I guess, it kind of hurt these. But yeah, Bitcoin puppets at point three. Uh, we got ordinal maxi biz at point three six. Uh, I'm currently holding two of these and I shop every day for these, by the way, I'm looking for some nice ones on the floor to pick up another one. Um, and ink, I mean the ink aftermath, it got a lot of FUD. A lot of people were showing that image where they were comparing it to, um, Azuki. Yeah. Where, so. uh, yeah. Where, let me, let me try to find it. I think I have it in DMS. Yeah. I have it right here. Yeah. I remember seeing that and it's like, I think it's funny when people do that because, yeah, I get it. Like, they look pretty similar. Like, let's just call it what it is. Objectively, there's a lot of similarities here. <laughs> there are, dude. Like the way she's holding the sword, and this one sword with the with the the gum, and then like you know hoodie, the the Pepe one here, the fire hair. Like, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. It's still. You know, we still saw them do the drawing process. I know they did a lot in the Discord live and stuff like that. Um, personally, I don't care. Like, dude, I, I like the art for for Ink. Ob obviously, I wish I would have sold mine at point oh eight eight. Right? I didn't. I know you you had sold at least one um, when we spoke about this last week. I didn't sell. I have two. I didn't sell any. I'm also still waiting for my one of one, dude. Where is my one of one? Um, but yeah, I wonder if these can have a, like a, a rally, you know, once they start announcing what they're actually doing and start announcing stuff, people kind of, a lot of people are saying it's like, you know, the ETH people were here for this mint and a lot of ETH people got whitelist the way they were just dumping them. I don't necessarily agree with that take because a lot of, mm. dude, a lot of people that I know who have ordinals are ETH people anyways, people are going to hold stuff they feel has value. They're going to look how, how much um, node monkeys were at like 0.9. And now they're down to 0.5. That's a lot of money. And same thing for OMBs. Like you said, uh, Green Eyes before the Mint were at what? 0.1, uh, 1.7 Bitcoin. And now they're at what for Green Eyes? If I scroll, there's one at 0.69 here. Yeah. You know, like we got to stop pretending that Bitcoin people are just so rich that they throw money at a floor and they don't care about price and they're just doing it for collecting. Yeah, there's more of those people, but. 
that's not that's not like the the norm right most of us are just trying to make money we're just trying to do it on a different chain and when there's cool stuff that we think is going to have value into the bull we'll hold it but you know i think bitcoin is going to have the same fate of eth nfts and soul nfts where we're going to get a point in the cycle where people just they don't want to hold as much in the paper and we're going to get prices that drop and then everybody's going to be like oh ordinals are dead once again and i don't think that's the case i do think we're going to have a very strong ordinals run but uh to don't like disillusion yourself by thinking oh ordinals are different and people are going to magically pump my bags uh, another one that minted was only force this was last week but uh, this one did really well pumped all the way to point oh four these are basically yeah they're higher than the the eth ones i know there's like rumors that if you hold these plus an eth one you might get a ruin i don't know how they're going to check if you actually hold both uh, cause since the wallets like aren't linked unless it's somehow through magic Eden, magic Eden also going to be doing ruins. Uh, they added a little ruin tab up here. Um, ruins I think are going live on April 18th. So that's exciting. Yeah. Get, get ready for ruins. I've been reading up a lot about them. It's going to be, I think it's going to be big. I hope so. Me. Meme coins on Bitcoin. I mean, Casey dropped some docs. Uh, somebody says, uh, put a stick, a Canto sticker over your McDonald's since it's not sponsored. Uh, yeah, dude, you're, you're ultimate sponsor boy right now. You're wearing the Nike hat, the, the McDonald's cup. Yeah. I went uh, to I, McDonald's. I you, sir. Uh, but yeah, dude, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it for mints that happened this week. And none of them were exciting. Like not, I mean, Inc and, and Oni force were last week. So none of them were exciting. There was, um, Elixir. That's a launch pad. And, um, a game launcher kind of like steam right that was supposed to launch this week and they delayed i do think that one would have performed well it's a free mint uh but yeah overall dude it's been really boring for nfts uh book of block i just looked dude i've been going through the the calendar on um alphabot and even here like there's i don't know there's there's really not too much that already has a mint date decided so it's it's like on the calendar elixir games delayed till april 25th um so a few weeks away uh, that's after token 2049 i'm going to be in dubai for token 2049 if anybody's there hit me up and uh we'll meet up but yeah dude mint, nfts just have been really boring um and speaking of boring. of ordinals i don't know if you saw this binance is getting rid of ordinals on their marketplace yeah i don't i don't see like why it really like does it really take them that much like i'm sure they have somebody handling it but i guess they just stopped caring randomly like what but i think like but i think to the opposite argument of that is like so did any of us ever care that they i i think i know it was like oh it's bullish they have ordinals but like have you ever gone to binance to trade nfts that might be why they stopped it is because nobody was using it because everyone just uses magic eden but it's also like, dude, Binance is illegal in Canada. Maybe the NFT platform isn't, but I, I lost access to Binance. I don't know about you in America. Uh, you guys have Binance US, but I'm not sure if you have access. Yeah, I don't know. I have I don't use Binance. Like the thing is, is everybody talks to like Binance listing, Coinbase listing. I'm like, I don't use either of those. So like, I don't care. But I know other people do because it's like the normie onboarding sites. For, I mean, for tokens, it's it's bullish. You know, Binance, it's launching on Binance. It's launched because they get the most volume. But for ordinals, like who for NFTs, who cares? I remember when FTX, when FTX had their NFT platform uh, back when I was sponsored, uh, and and I was like, like nobody cared that they had NFTs. Nobody wanted to trade there, especially that their trading was like off off chain. It was really weird. So nobody cared uh, when a big marketplace gets because you're not going to go to a crypto platform to trade nfts you're just going to stick on the place that you're trading anyways that everybody else is trading this is where the vault you're going to go where the volume is you know there's these random exchanges that launch and nobody cares you go where the volume is uh moving on um the doc is a little bit all okay i guess we had some questions uh you had asked me in dm or it, like when we chat in dms do you think we're gonna get an nft run like we did in 2021 yeah um what do you think? Yeah. So, um, when, so gorilla and I kind of had this conversation where I randomly asked him and I was just like, do, do you think that we'll get another NFT cycle? 
Like, do I do I really think that because I think a lot of people remember 2021? Like, do we get another cycle like 2021 for NFTs? And the thing about it is it feels like there needs to be some sort of change, right? Because what's funny about NFTs is that when somebody launches an NFT, everyone's like, oh, well, NFTs, you know, you're a bit like you're starting a business. Like, you know, you launch an NFT project like that. You're you're a business now. But like when people launch meme coins, they're just like, all right, like it's just a coin. Like nobody's expected to do any business. Like they're not expected to fill any roadmap. So like, and also the other thing is, and this is a question. So there's two questions here that I want to ask. One, why is it that NFT projects are like, people want them to launch businesses, but meme coins don't. And then two, what was the last 100 X NFT launch? Was it like, uh, and, and I, I mean, I guess we could talk about like L37 and Counterfire because those were free to like one ETH. But when was the last time we saw like a, a Goblin Town? You know, Goblin Town was two years ago. The the point that I'm trying to make is like, there has not been, there are 100X, 2, 300, 400, 500X plays on meme coins every day, every single day. But it's like, it doesn't really happen that often on, with NFTs really at all anymore. You're like looking at a 5X at best. Yeah. So for your first question, why do people look at NFTs as a business? I think it has to do with uh, the way they go about it for pre-sale and they're, or they're giving away whitelists and stuff. The team is kind of like introducing themselves in a way they're presenting. Not always. Sometimes they just hand out whitelists, whatever. But the fact that there's a whitelist, you kind of gave a person your money versus just buying it on secondary market. I feel you care a lot le less when you buy it on secondary market and it dips, you kind of blame yourself versus if you mint a whitelist and it goes under mint price immediately, you're pissed at them. I mean, both ways are pissed at them, but I think it's, it's the nature of it. Like a, a shit coin, you're just, they're just launching it. Like it, unless you're, uh, if you're doing a presale, I guess it's different. Then you're mad, right? Right. The Maki big brother one, everybody was pissed at them. But if it's just a, a coin that launches on a secondary market, you don't care when an NFT stealth, <clears throat> stealth launches or look at Goblin Town, like they just launched Nobody knew and they bought it. That kind of thing, I feel, I mean, obviously people still hold, you know, the Goblin Town team accountable, let's say, but um, people care less because it just launches without any expectations. It's just a token that launched, like who cares? Versus NFTs, they do this huge campaign. They have collab managers. They hired people. Like you really feel, that, especially us that we talk to the teams, you really feel the presence of a team. So it's, it's, as if they're like coming and saying, hey, we're going to do this whole thing. They're pitching you. It's like the carnival comes to town and then what they're going to bounce. Like, no, you better stay here and build a full amusement park uh, versus a meme coin. It's really just like it's like a lemonade stand for a day. Like, hey, come buy our crazy flavor of lemonade. Okay, bye. Like you have no expectation that they're going to be there the next day. I think it's very much a culture thing and how it's presented. If an NFT project just launched, they didn't tell you they were going to launch. They just went to market and it starts to boom and people buy in. I feel people care a lot less because they're just like, oh, cool, I made profit. If not, if it leaves, the per you're like, wait, why did I even buy into this? You know, like, oh, it's it's on me. Like, it's a team. I don't know what they're doing. They just launched random. I bought into it because it was pumping. I think it's very much just the way it's presented, the way we're sold NFTs versus the way we're sold uh, a meme coin. It's just like, hey, you're 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 browsing a million meme coins that are launching every second. And uh, and for your second question, the one, yeah, it's it, you. It's we're cherry picking because we're looking at free mints, but uh, a paid mint that performed incredibly well. It's been a very long time, uh, but but free mints. You know, um, somebody bringing up here, uh, um, Kibby QBX performing really well. Uh, like you said, L three seven, the counter fire, uh, the games NFT games .gg, uh, free mint. It went all the way. Last I checked, it was. It, <clears throat> let me check because I I own one still. Um, and these are all NFTs that have a token linked to them. That's the thing. Uh, that's something I brought up in my video. Like the perfect combo right now for NFTs is a, why can't I find the page? It's annoying. Uh, it's a free mint. It's, uh, here it is. Uh, let me get my screen up. Oop, this one. Uh, yeah, these are currently sitting at uh, 1.68 ETH from a free mint. They have a token link to them. It was a free mint and low supply. So free mint, no risk upside only if you're a minter, low supply, 
it's so much easier. Um, you know, a lot of projects do market make. I'm not saying this is what these guys did, but a lot of the projects do that. So it's a lot easier to get the floor up. There's a lot less sell pressure. Um, a lot more people want to buy in and then token dude, because we're all here for money. Like the projects that understand we are here for money are the ones who do better. That's why the ones who give you pre-sale, like I did pre-sale for these and I'm getting a token airdrop for these. Um, so I'm just still holding mine because I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to make money. And I know they have a lot planned for the future. Um, I, I invest in, in games, just full disclosure. So like I, I might know some extra stuff, but um, yeah, Overtrip, I mean, Overtrip, same thing. They have their farming program. The ones, the NFTs that are doing well, I feel are like they're associated to something legit. They're associated to something where you know, I, okay, I'm going to get something out of this in the future. I'm going to get a token. Something's going to come versus, dude, the number one question I get from people in my DMs is, hey, should I buy a, a, a mutant or should I buy a, what do you think of Clonex? Like they're down to 0.5 and it's Nike and all this. And I'm just like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And, and I go through this a lot as well. But what's the benefit of you buying that NFT? You're pretty much just buying it and praying that either the team is going to do something or NFT uh uh, or web three community is all at the same time going to be like, Oh, we all want clone X's or we all want mutants. You're, you're praying. And what at best, if you buy an ape right now, at best, you're probably going to get, that's how I look at it, a two X. And I'm like, if that's the case and the floor can get nuked by blur farmers, uh, it's a lot less liquid. So if that's the case, why wouldn't you just go buy an altcoin? Cause we all know, we all say, yes, yeah, Solana is going to four X from here or like at least three X from here. You know, AVAX is going to do this. Like there's so many altcoins that are way more liquid. Uh, there's way more people buying them and we know that they're, or we, we hope, but let's, we know that they're going to four X. So why would you go for an NFT versus just going for an altcoin? Yep. <clears throat> Not all it the really way. really kills NFTs. Like. <laughs> Not all the way. Everything that you said was, was on point. And like one thing that you mentioned at the beginning of your of your thing was about culture and like that's something that just doesn't really exist with NFTs anymore. Like that culture feels like it's just gone. I don't know where it went. Like I don't know at what point it like went away, but yo my dog well, give me a second. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I think um it also has to, like we had this very much in in ordinals and i feel ordinals still does have the the culture it is slowing down a little bit now which is natural right you get highs and lows i think it'll come back once we get ruins because everybody's going to be hopefully making money on these ruins which are meme coins on bitcoin and then the money hopefully will flow into ordinals collections uh but yeah, overall, the culture, like who, who's buying PFPs or buying JPEGs just to buy JPEGs, right? Not that many people. I think the other thing is we have a lot of chains. So we have now Say, you have Base, you have Blast, and people are trying to make money, but they don't actually care about the chain. So there's a, there's a certain segment of, or group of people who do stay once they buy in and they kind of like, like look at Cool Times, right? He did a lot with say and he's you know doing all these spaces and it worked for him he made a ton of money same thing like um kennick with base like he's crushing it on base his content's doing well he's making amazing trades to niche down into one of these things does do good but it's not like they're switching you know their their whole uh, kennick still rocks like an azuki you know he's not rocking like how many people are rocking base nfts how many people are rocking blast nfts not that many it really stays in the top chains solana eth and bitcoin and like th there is a culture in there but uh we're just gonna get waves uh ash is not back yet so i'll one man show it a uh, little bit for now let me keep going through through our list here um we did want to talk about what projects we are actually hyped i have a few other things i wanted to bring up but i'll wait for ash to come back here um but i mean i i made my video that i posted was it yesterday or Wednesday? Yesterday, you know, I spoke about projects that I'm still hyped about. I think there's a lot of gaming projects that are are looking good. Um, I'll, I'll wait from the let's let's look through the comments a little bit here. Um, the argument can be that NFTs are more expensive than meme coins. Correct me if I'm wrong. Not all of them, um, especially on ETH though. The gas really does hurt. But I think like a meme coin, you kind of just get in and out when you want, right? It's really fast to sell versus if you're buying an NFT. Yeah, I find it's di it's a different buying experience because you could for NFTs, you you see the floor, you see, 
like, oh, wait, there's 50 and now there's like 10 listings that just came in. I feel it's more about the buying experience than um, like 404s are the perfect are the perfect example of this because 404, you get both the NFT and the token. I have uh, what's it called? Asterix. Um, and I've I've never, ever even considered, I guess people are buying the rare ones. So I have um, Asterix here. Uh, I don't know why it still shows them, but whatever. Uh, I have Asterix. I've never considered buying it as an NFT. I always like trade it as a token. You can re-roll your art. That's what's cool about it being a token. But yeah, I don't even consider buying and selling it as an NFT because as an NFT, either I accept yeah a blur bid, which is going to be less than the floor, or I have to list it and hope somebody comes and buys mine. They pick mine versus a token. I could just dump that into the the pool. I could just be like, yeah, I want out right now. And that's the equivalent of accepting a bid, but I might be getting a lower price for the bid. And then I have to pay the, you know, I have to pay blur their fees. And then I have to pay a fee on ETH to get my money out of the blur pool uh, versus just like going on Uniswap or whatever tool you're using and getting out. Um, but 404s, I feel are a perfect example of that. KK is saying, I can't see a cycle like 2021. That was crazy. Um, I mean, I hope we get it, but yeah, it's, uh, I think it'll be different. I think right now what we're seeing with NFTs is it's either random stuff like me, you know, like meme coins, the way meme coins come out and they die within one day, or we're seeing legit stuff that's launching. And so it's very much one-offs, you know, the games, the L three sevens, the counter fires one-offs that actually last. And there's a company supporting it and there's a token and have a huge plan or, it's like a meme coin where it's popular for a day and then nobody cares. So like the the projects in between are really struggling and I think they will continue to struggle. There's a pro there's a game that's launching and they want to do an NFT and their mint price is like 0.25 for a massive collection. And I was like, and it's and their whole benefit is it's going to get you their token. I was like, dude, just do a token. Just launch this as a pre-sale and you'll raise probably 2x the amount you're trying to raise right now because people are just aping the tokens. It just doesn't make sense for a lot of um NFT projects to launch. What do you guys think of the 404 narrative given uh, they have both? And yeah, so I, I just uh, mentioned that, but I, I like them to be honest. I, I really like it. Um, I do it, like it is, I don't think it works for every project, but uh, I, I like the idea that, you know, as the price goes up, especially if you have art attached to it, like I have on screen right now, these, I don't get the rarity for these. Like I don't understand uh, there's tears. There's people who are paying like 11 ETH for like the really expensive ones. I won't, I'll never understand that because I would just, you know, I would just flip mine and then go sweep the floor, buy 10. Um, I'll never understand that since it's linked to a token. But the, the more, the higher the price of your 404 goes, the less people can afford it and your art becomes more scarce because less people have your PFP or your, your generative art or whatever it is. Uh, price goes up equals culture. Yeah, we only care about stuff. The art looks nicer when the price goes up. Uh, I feel like there are too many communities hard to keep up with 10 different chats. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. I, most of us have like a home, right? Whether it's uh, uh, an NFT project, whether it's like Gorilla Labs or Canto Labs, you have like a main Discord you hang out with in, and then you have a few others you just go randomly pop in. Um, we'll keep going through some of the... the okay, we have some people commenting on the culture thing. You think these play for airdrop games are actually worth it. Teams usually get allocated a really small amount for that. Um, I mean, some of them have, look at Pixels. Pixels was worth it. Um, I think Nifty think. Island will probably be worth it. I mean, dude, I already got airdropped an island from Nifty Island and it's worth, it was worth like 0.6 ETH, like yeah. just for playing. Um, yeah, I like Nifty Island a lot and they, they're in tune with, with what's going on. So I like that game a lot. They're doing play to airdrop. And if anything, I actually think that play to airdrop is probably a better way to do this onboarding, right? Because it's like, if you want people to play your game, right? Like incentivize people to play your game in a way. Like one thing about the whole like gaming meta is that they like, it's like some of these projects had games and they like didn't incorporate um, getting whitelist through gaming or like they're not doing anything with like, oh, you can get like, you know, airdrop points from gaming. It's like, why, why is it that there's a lot of gaming projects that are making people social farm 
I mean, I know the answer to this, but why are there gaming projects that are making people social farm on Twitter and use their hashtag and like their ticker symbol for like all these different games, yet they're not incentivizing people to play any of the games that they have? Like they're just they're just trying to get marketing like they care about. And it's like they care more about attention than they care about like people playing their game which is what actually last thing I'll say is this is one of the things that like kind of worries me about. And I know we're going to talk about this. The, uh, these like investment rounds is I feel like there's a lot of these opportunities that are coming up and these teams are putting together like a half ass game or just like some sort of product in people's face. And then they're going out and then they're just trying to raise like a ridiculous overvalued like round, uh, from everyone because they're, they're, everybody's coping from missing portal. So everybody just wants to get in on rounds. And so there's like a lot of projects that like, don't really care about getting people on their game. They just care about raising it like a high valuation. Agreed. Uh, yeah, there's dude, every day I'm getting offered like four, four, to, four new pre-sales, especially like games. And I've told them like, dude, I'm really calming down on games, like individual games. They're not all going to go to 5 billion. You know, um, some of these games don't do well. So I'm I'm really chilling. I mean, dude, I've been farming um, Mon Protocol. Some of these games are going to hit a billion, though, like for sure. And from an investment standpoint, there are going to be a lot of these games that will launch, and they may not have like a ton of users, but like their game is still going to cook. Like their coin or their coin is still going to cook. Like it's still going to do well. Um, I'm kind of just like talking out loud. I'm not, yeah, I'm, not yeah, yeah, I'm still streaming. I'm doing all my farming. <laughs> Let's yeah, see what I, I hit, dude. Let's see what I hit. I, I'm I'm still look, I'm here for money, right? Like I'll call it what it is. Like I like gaming too, but like when I get into one of these rounds, I say to myself, like, is this is this coin gonna get pumped through the gaming narrative to a one, two, three billion dollar valuation? Like, for example, that per ram, like I could see that going to a billion plus. Like I know that D Labs is doing a token billion plus and a mocha. That's probably going to be like the number one gaming token. Like that mm -hmm. could quite literally go past everything. Like what's, what's like the number one gaming token immutable. I think, I don't know, but yeah. I mean, it'd, it'd be one of these big chains, but if you can call that a gaming token. Yeah. Otherwise it would be like sandbox or something like that, you know, or like portal or, is, or like, ApeCoin. Well, not even ApeCoin. Oh, I mean, I guess you can consider ApeCoin a, a gaming coin. Um, Speaking of which, what is going on with that? I don't want to talk about that, but like... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my I'm point there. is there's money to be made on the gaming narrative even if the games aren't good. Which is, Agreed. Which is cool if you're here for money. But yeah, if you're saying individual game because um, there's infrastructure plays, right? Like like Beam. Uh, Beam was one I really like. There's also like these launch pads. But, um, yeah, individual games. I mean, dude, Esch I, I slept on Echelon, and it's such a good one, man. I regret. I'll never uh, – I'm prime for Parallel, Echelon Prime. I'll never forgive myself. $2.2 billion right now. This thing ran from, like, $3 we could have originally gotten in. Um, this one I really like. Like, this is a, uh, an amazing game. They really focus on their world building and the lore. I think they did it correctly the way they went about everything and they're expanding colony looks great they're hitting the whole ai narrative but some of these games i'm just like yeah they're not and i do the same thing dude i i, I straight up ask a project you know all right I, I don't ask them i look at their terms and i'm like okay what's their how much do i get on tge um and then what's like the cliff what's the vesting what are my odds of making my money back break to break even on day one that's what i'm looking for and you know i get it projects that might not like that but it's like you know, I don't want to make my money back over six months, over eight months, because it's like crypto could 2x in that time or three. Like, you know, there's an opportunity cost that I'm taking by giving you my money. Yeah. And kind of like I said earlier with Portal, like Portal was like it was a diamond in the rough, right? Like that was quite literally one of the best opportunities. And, and it happened actually again, like Gaiman was very similar, like that Gaiman it did almost just as well. I don't, I don't know. I didn't send for it, but like it, did. and it was worth farming and yeah. it was worth farming. It was worth, it was the same thing. And it's like, now everyone's taking the portal in the game and playbook, right? Like everybody yeah. portal, they rolled it out. The thing about, here's the thing about portal. 
Bortle rolled out their farming. They did a round. I think angel investors got in at 15 million market cap, right? You got 15% on TGE, 12 month linear, no cliff. They crushed it. They were the first, the first ones to like really with like a big actual product really put out this like social farming type thing and it cooked. And then now what do you see? You see everybody else that's all these other projects are now doing the same thing. Everybody it's farm everything. It's it's all on, on Twitter. And the difference is, is that a lot of these coins that are coming out right now, they are raising at a much higher valuation for no reason, which is funny to me. Yeah, because yeah. they know they know people dude, people are literally aping everything without doing any research. Right. Oh, Becker mentioned it in a video. Yeah, I'm all in. Full send. Yeah. Um, some tokens are doing well. I'm wondering why there's two uh really low low sales here. Um, but yeah, some a, a block had some really I'm waiting for them to announce what their their uh exchange is gonna be if they hit like a tier one exchange, because then I think it's gonna full send. Uh, they had some really now it seems like there's some lower sales but they had some good sales here all the way up to a dollar 69 i think it was or even more yeah a dollar 69 i'm pretty sure is what i saw um can i go to the second page and no, i can't but uh yeah this is like trading it would be trading a 1.67 billion market cap i do think we're going to continue to see some really big wins um mm. We will. But yeah, we're seeing some tokens. Uh, easy here has some. Tra I don't know what the raise price. That's what when you're looking at these things, man. The prices are so different. A dollar, and then at the top, somebody paid two dollars and forty-seven cents. Um, but no, I mean we're 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 constantly looking at these raises, dude. I mean, I have I've done a ton, dude. I I have my list here, and I know I'm missing some, but I did Pixelmon, and I see people talking about some of these in the in the comments. Neon Heroes. Um, Planet Mojo, Avalon, Games, Zero Lend, Ready Games, Chrono Forge, uh, Ooga Booga, and Kodiak. Those are both on Barachain. Um, Blood Loop is one I'm doing that's coming out from Cedify. Uh, I know Becker's pushing that one really hard. Uh, well, three, we both did that one. We had it in my syndicate. Um, this redacted coin that I can't really talk about, uh, and one intro. And then I've done a few more of it. I just forgot to put it in the list. Like I've been. I've been sending to a lot of, of these pre-sales and my strategy is really just Spitfire, right? I'm trying to get into all the ones that look like they have really good terms. I really like the project. The valuation feels fair. Um, so I'm just trying to spread my bets and, and get a lot of these. But I have a lot of money, let's say, out on the street that uh, I'm waiting to see a return on. And hopefully we get a lot of you know these these launches in Q2, which they were supposed to do, but it's like none of them have announced when they're going to launch. And I know they're at the whims of the exchanges. Like if you, especially if you're getting like a tier one, like if you're launching through Binance, Binance is telling you when you're launching. You're not you don't tell them when you when you want to launch. They tell you. Same thing for Magic Eden. Like a lot of people are like, why is this project not announcing its launch date? Because they're launching through Magic Eden, and Magic Eden decides when they're launching. Like it's they don't get to decide. Yeah. And I've sent for a lot too. And what's actually interesting is that like, I like how now there are a lot of these like projects, protocols and whatever doing terms and like seeing what terms they send over because I have seen some really, really bad stuff for some really, really bad, bad products. And it's like, you like I, I had somebody pitch me something the other day and I was like, this project sucks and your valuation sucks and you're you're there's a year cliff, you know, like just terrible. And it's just funny to me because now all of a sudden it's very it feels very like predatory. Like that's how I would say it is like it's it's kind of like how whenever there was a meta in NFTs, everyone else would just launch it and do the same thing. And they would try to like capitalize on a certain meta. And I feel like it's the same thing here where people are just, they, they're just putting together some product, they're pushing it. And then they're realizing that any, everybody is, everybody's, I, I said this, but like everyone's coping over portal and don't get me wrong. Like there are going to be other good coins that are worth it, but it's like, you have to understand that when you do something like this, you're locking up money that you may not ever see again. 
like yeah, yeah. just just like anything else like you don't have access to it like you're at the the whim of the terms like and it could also fail like you you don't know so it's it's one of those things that it's like you kind of have to, it's it's like anything with meme coins you have to buy a bunch so that you can eventually hit um but for me i'm like very happy that i that i sent for portal but i didn't send for gaming so it's like what do you do there you you just have to like get into whatever opportunities are available yeah, I think the opportunity cost is something a lot of people don't consider. They just think, oh, this deal's bullish and they want to send. But like you shouldn't be doing a you know a five thousand dollar ticket if you only have 10, 15k. You're locking up way too much of your money. And this if it doesn't launch for three months, like you might miss a lot of plays and and maybe it, it completely flops. Like we don't know. Nobody knew Portal was gonna full send until we got way closer. Like people were fighting it. And then as we got closer, then they got bullish, you know. Another um, thing is that in traditional finance, if you're talking about putting five grand into something and you can potentially see a 3x return in 18 months, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. Versus here, that's like, oh, that's it? Like, yeah. I might as well just hold ETH. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or Solana. Yeah, but um, it's like, if you think about it, like some of these investment rounds, it's like, even if you put in 5K and you turn it into 15K, like over the course of 18 months, that's actually pretty good. Like all things considered, we're just, we're just like messed up because like you could also put 5k into a random coin and it could go to 30k within an hour if you find the right thing. That's why we all want these moonshots. Uh, and I, I've recently done some like pre-sales for meme coins, like diff not spend wallet. And dude, one of them went from like 2k to 30k and i'm just like okay versus like i'm looking i'm looking at this this pitch deck for this project they want to hold on to my money for i think i know which one you were talking about for the one year uh, without saying it but there's another one that i spoke to and dude their vesting was five years and i'm just like yeah well, you're building for the next cycle like dude um zero tge six month cliff five years of vesting like what like, yeah. dude, how much is Bitcoin going to be worth in five years? I might as well just hold Bitcoin, like versus gambling on a project over the next five years that might not be here. Uh, well, that's what that's or, what these yeah. projects need to realize. Like, yeah. they have to realize that that is how I think too. A lot of other people think about it as well, and it's like, if you're going to hold on to my money for so long and I'm not going to see any of it, then why wouldn't I just hold Solana? Like, why yeah. wouldn't I just? And then I'll just hang on to it. And I don't have to worry about you doing anything. And you can trade it whenever you want. Yeah, and I can trade it whenever I want. I hate being at the mercy of other people telling me when I can get my money, which is why I actually, if there are good terms, and I say to myself, like, it raises at a 60 mil, right? You get 10% on TGE. You say to yourself, do I think this can go to 600 mil? If the answer is yes, then sure. If I can get my money back on 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 tg then that's great yeah but uh, peyton in the audience what's up uh web3 gaming channel and yes to your other question that i won't pull up it does um yeah no dude i i, I agree uh it's might as well just just hold on to it uh but somebody was asking i saw somebody is grass legit i did have a call with the team like they seem legit i'm not doing it on my my pc but uh, i know a lot of people are doing it you literally just install a plugin and you're like loaning out your IP or whatever, um, and you're just earning coins. Uh, so yeah, it does, you know, I, I don't want to <laughs> say yet, do your own research, but in my opinion, I think it's it's chill. Uh, it's 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 safe or it's legit at least. I don't know if it's safe, but it's legit. Um, but speaking of things not being legit, we finally got, I don't know if you had done this one, dude, the Munchables. I had put in an ETH. I know people who put in like six ETH and... No. Nope. Um, finally, they they refunded. I got my airdrop. My, I got my one ETH back uh, in Munchables. I wonder who's going to put their money back in. I know now, like they did, you know, full security audits and everything. But it's still there's kind of a, a like a stain on their project now in your mind. You know, like hey, do I want to put money back into this thing? But a lot of people farming blast. That's one thing people are farming. Obviously, you don't get to farm it for free. One you can farm for free is uh, Pack Moon, dude. People crushing it on Pac Moon. Um, I mean, Jen made a killing from uh, her views, dude. Even mine, like I, I posted. You made a lot of money. You I made like 300k. 
<laughs> yeah okay first that was a, a troll by the way to everybody wondering i was just like yo how do i farm pack moon <laughs> i had somebody just, reach out to me and they were like is this fucking real <laughs> no seriously yeah and, until people kick you realize when he saw the 426.9 i just edited it in uh you just press f12 f12 and you get to edit um yeah no <laughs> this is definitely not real sir you could it's easy to check you literally just look at the leaderboard and you'll be able to see what did gorilla actually score at the top of the leaderboard no um but dude yeah no here's my actual airdrop uh i had 28k views i didn't even tweet for that's the funny thing i didn't even tweet about them during the second campaign i don't think um i think it's just the tweets from my first one that qualified or maybe i i posted them in a video and they were one of my tags but dude i got 28k views i got paid 65 k tokens which when i checked it yesterday that was 2700 dollars 10 cents of you bro that's that's legit man so i'm yeah, yeah i'm like yeah, yo i'm a farm airdrop three like what is the, i'm a farm this thing <laughs> yeah these collab managers are giving you five spots for one tweet right yeah 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 these yeah pac moon gives you three grand yeah for, for, <laughs> for whatever I, for, for whatever i want yeah 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 isn't that funny um, but they have their current campaign going on, which, I mean, if you have a presence on Twitter, I think this is worth farming. They're doing it different, right? This is not a farm where you mass spam. You need, it's quality over quantity. I like that they're doing this. You need to post something. They got to like your post and then you're eligible to start earning pack. So, you know, if you make a video, if you make a thread, you know, Whale had a really great thread. Um, did I lose it? Wait. Uh, well, the, the one, let me just pull it back up. I love uh, it, by the way. I love this because I really think that it encourages people now know that there's money to be made. It encourages good content. And I've seen like a lot of those, like, who's here to farm this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And it like defeats the purpose because people are like lumping all these things into the same thing. Whereas yeah. like with portal, like portal was the only one that was going on at the time. So it was like, that was the one, but now it's like, does it have the same effect if there's six different tickers in one tweet? I don't think it does. Yeah, it doesn't. It's, it's, I guess it gets your numbers up, right? If their goal is to get the numbers up for, um, I guess they, they show Binance or whatever, like, look how many people tweeted about us, then who cares? But yeah, if it's, it's to actually get people to talk about your token or to know what's going on. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't do the job versus what these guys are doing. Uh, Parker, I think you're doing this, right? Let me yeah. See. He's been spamming like crazy. <laughs> he's in the audience right now. Yeah. Like this, let's go. And he tags them all. I mean, I did it too, dude. I, I've replied to random, like, if you just reply to some of these viral posts, like a video of something random, you'll get a lot of views. So that's like one way to get around it. But I like what Pac-Man is doing where it's like, no, no, we got to like your post if you're going to start to qualify. Um, but there's a lot out there, dude. I mean, even the ones he typed, Bubbles, uh, Param, like you said, tri over trip, over trip. you do have to tweet about them because I, I spoke about this in my video. Uh, if I go to my... Uh, if I go to my invites um hurry up yeah if i go to my invites dude i have from my video i have almost a thousand invites like i find that's really good I, I don't know what this is i qualify for some earning program you guys use my code if you're going to go buy stuff and i get three percent of your of your spend uh you know 759 people signed up with my code who are actually farming and i only have 6200 points and then you jump to the leaderboard Okay, they they got rid of the top ones. I guess they were botting. But dude, these people still have like 100k points. Like if I'm not tweeting about trip and farming it, I'm like my my invites are I feel they need to put a lot more weight on the invites, dude. Yeah. Yeah, what? That's yeah. actually that feels very lopsided. I hope well Ruthie isn't watching this, but we got to reach out to the surgeons guys. We need to give them a little, uh, yeah, a little I have a thousand invites and I only have 6k points, Yeah, but, that's... but these guys are doing a, a tweet and they have 200 K. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? Dude, that... <laughs> dude, that's actually really funny. I'm, I'm going to send that to them. I'm going to send them. Clip this it. Clip. Somebody clip it. <laughs> I'm going to send them this clip. I'll clip it later. Um, imaginary ones. Let's go. I have 2 million points. How many invites do I have? I got to find a way to check it. This one's cool. Cause same thing you, you get to this one, you actually get to play their game and exactly like what you said, right? They're doing both. They're doing the farming and they're doing the pay, hey, play our game and you get some points. 
I like it. Pixel Pals, what's my two hours and a half left? Like I wrote gorilla on the ground. Boom, gorilla. <laughs> uh, I, so I like these ideas, dude. It gets you coming back to their game daily. Like you're used to it. When Pixelmon launches their full game and they have like farming in their game, it's built into your head to go play a Pixelmon game. That's kind of how I'm, I don't know if it's actually going to translate, but I like that they're doing this. Like, dude, I come back every day for to spin the wheel. Uh, I want my points because I want to maximize my airdrop. So I like these kind of campaigns and I do think they're worth farming. Even if you only get a hundred bucks, you know, even if you don't get that much money, like, dude, that's a hundred dollars for free that you didn't have for literally clicking buttons. Like, what are you doing anyways? Instead of playing like league or something, like while you're waiting in the lobby, you playing whatever, waiting for your call of duty lobby to load, just do spin the wheel and like, you know, retweet half of all these retweet stuffs, by the way, on these campaigns, like, Project's going to hate me for saying this. You don't actually have to do the retweet, by the way. They don't check. You just wait the minute and it completes. Like, <laughs> it doesn't actually check. <laughs> so, funny. I don't know. I do think the people asking, is it worth it? Even if you don't get 100 bucks, dude, it's 100 bucks. Like, while you're on your PC waiting or while you're in your work meeting or whatever, not listening, just do it. Yep. I agree. <laughs> Somebody in the audience here, NFT and memes are a waste of one's life if you make it the center of your life. It's a miserable life. It needs to be almost 5% at most of one's time of portfolio dealing with nothing and actual value. Disagree. I think Ash, Ash and I would disagree considering where we are. <laughs> disagree. 95% of your life is completely spent at your desk and, and in two years from now, we can go and uh, we can cut that down to like 50 or something but no nah, like the thing is is and, and this is all seriousness is that these markets are it is so hard it is so hard to make money in traditional markets and in traditional jo jobs these days this is quite literally the most lucrative market and such a golden opportunity to make wealth if you just pay attention to it and if you're in the right place at the right time, you are paying attention to the right things. I know somebody, first of all, I made, I, I traded this, that MF or coin last week. I made 60 K in like eight hours. I know a guy who literally made, he cashed out half a million dollars off of 300 bucks. Like you quite literally cannot do that anywhere else. Like where, yeah. what name any other market that you can do that. And like, Anyway, I'm I'm not gonna like go and, and and get into like a whole thing, but no, I I I definitely disagree. Spend your whole life at your desk, and if <laughs> do you what makes you happy, dude. If you don't enjoy it, I agree. Like, don't do it. But other than that, um, somebody here saying bro's gonna stay poor. Made 50k last week on Athena and and Wormhole. Yeah, dude, Wormhole paid uh, really well just for using it, man. I know people who hadn't used it in the longest time, and they made like 10k. Um, yeah, th these are the other type of, of airdrops that I did have on a list. Like, we're, we're all farming these social campaigns, fine, but let's we can't forget about like the protocols, you know, the stuff that you farm. Like, dude, I've I've been farming Linea. I'm farm I'm farming base because if they do an airdrop, I think it'll be good. Um, I've been farming through my friend's service, um, uh, Layer Zero. Uh, there's zk Sync. I think these ones are gonna, you know, in the next couple of months, we're gonna get them to airdrop and. I think they're going to do well. So I think those are worth farming as well. Those cost money. You have to spend gas, but those are the ones I'm also doing. Um, and I do expect to make good money. I know a lot of people complained about, um, what's it called? Uh, Starknet because they didn't qualify or they missed it. Like, dude, I did, I had like 10 wallets farming, but I, I loafed on a lot of them. I only hit on two where I actually had enough volume or whatever it was, but I still made like a few thousand bucks just for farming. And it covered the cost of all 10 of my wallets and more. And I made profit. So to me, it was worth. I should have put more time and attention. But um, had I done it properly, I would have made like probably five figures. This guy said, what dApps do you think are the best to farm for Blast Gold? Wasabi. What? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask, dude, because I've been loafing. I haven't done a single one. Um, I think, Ash, you've done more. I know... So I spoke to Lambo and I spoke to Jen and I wanted to talk to both of them about like blast farming and like, what's the best place to do it. 
And then we ended up talking about content and other things and like life. <laughs> so, so like, uh, it was still worth it, but basically they told me that, uh, yeah. And also what is it? District one. So like that one too, there's like a couple that are very passive. It really just depends on, and I'm one, not, I'm not the person to ask about this either, but it really just depends on like, do you want to be an active participant or a passive participant? Like, are you going to take money and just dump it in and wait? Or are you going to actively play into the game of the, of, of farming and, and that kind of thing. So I don't know. That's something that honestly you and I should probably take a little bit more time and maybe go over it next, next stream. Mm. Yeah, I haven't. I mean, a lot of them have already distributed a majority of their gold. Um, Wasabi still has a hundred K gold left, but, um, you know, Sakai, Sakai glory, uh, didn't distribute that much. Uh, I also saw it down here, the one I invested in zero land guys, zero lens, a great one. <laughs> uh, they didn't launch yet, but yeah, I, I haven't been doing this. So I'm the wrong person to ask uh, a referral code for side quests of revolving games. I meant, um, do I still have it pulled up, sir? I think it's just crypto gorilla yt right it's just my twitter let me post it in the chat yeah crypto gorilla yt it's my twitter handle i uh, appreciate you using my code sir if that's what you're asking unless you're showing you um tell me something about arcade games uh, you mean like revolving game with their arcade token <laughs> this guy's spamming it <laughs> he spammed yeah. it like five times <laughs> yeah he's like tell me about this i don't even know what it is uh, I know there is a project called Arcade, but if you're saying this one, because uh, they're the revolving games is, uh, thanks, buddy. Thanks for using it. Yes. Okay, you're saying this one. Uh, this is revolving games, dude. The team behind um, Skyborn and a few other projects. Uh, their NFTs have been performing incredibly well. Um, the the Nexian gems. Cooking. They're at like one point yeah. five. Uh, they're back down now, but like these uh, are going to be like nodes, and then I know they're going to have nodes. Oh, uh, they have multiple what? games. You they're RG bytes. You know why these dumped? Is because uh, that guy Jeffrey dumped all of them. Why? I don't know, but he dumped all of his. Sorry, can you hear that? Is that is yes. my telegram sound coming through? Yes. Okay, I need to turn that off for next time. Yeah. Um, on Windows, but, you could just mute notifications on the bottom right. Uh, um, I should do that. But uh, but yeah, I don't even have my Telegram open. Anyway, Jeffrey dumped a lot. Um, I think he dumped all of them all in like one. God damn it. Yeah, it is open. He click the arrow on the bottom right and you'll get all your apps. And then you find Telegram, right click it and you could do mute notifications. Even though it's closed, it's open on your PC. It's just not open as a window. Okay. Well, okay. Now, now this is, now this is. You got to mute it. No, you got to mute it. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. I mean, uh, so, but yeah, he dumped like a lot of them all at once, which I mean, I get it. If you're a whale in a project, then like, you don't want to like, you don't want to, you almost like can't sell off in phases because if you are a whale in an NFT people project are watching like your this, wallet and they see that you dump five and you have 50 of them, then people are just going to be like, why is he dumping? And they're going to get like all like scared. But yeah, he dumped a lot of, that wasn't the bites. It was the gems, but it's, I like nuking a, a chart in one shot with uh accepting bids it's fun that's what um, he did and people got mad well too bad um let's see what else we got in here uh bear chain yeah dude i'm bullish on bear chain i mean like i said i invested in kodiak and uh ooga booga uh, the aggregator and kodiak uh the decks flagship decks so i think those are going to do well uh the nfts on bear chain are crazy dude they're such high priced i was like yo how do i launch my own <laughs> and get it officially approved um dex rogue x I, I don't know this one like i said i'm not really fo following uh the blast stuff but i'll definitely look into it dex rogue x on blast will give up 94k gold after a snapshot on sunday by the way um what about easy token going to blast any info on that one i do not have any info on that one sir i've spoken to them a few times but i don't uh, when is it going to launch and where? I am not sure. I will get that info for next time. Um, where they haven't announced, like uh, everybody's praying that they're going to get a tier one exchange, but they can't look if, if a pro let's say a project does get Binance, if they publicly say, or they're pri even privately saying, Hey, we're launching on Binance. If Binance hears that they are no longer launching through Binance. Like they have to keep it hush hush or they, they lose the deal. 
So they will never leak any rumors you hear, like take it with a grain of salt because the team wouldn't risk doing that. So uh, we don't know when they're going to launch. So what about well three when, uh, when Kyung's tweeted and then deleted. Oh God. <laughs> dude, I dude, didn't see that. Dude. Like a week ago, he tweeted something about like on his main page, something about him and Binance and oh, then deleted God. it. I could find, I, I'm not going to be able to find it right now, but I, I know for a fact that that happened. Oh yeah. Here, Kenny saying, did you guys see open C and blood? I did. I actually had this on the list today. Uh, I found that hilarious. How funny is it, dude, that open C is launching blast before blur blast nfts before yeah. blur <laughs> yeah that's actually i mean that was always the biggest like one of the big issues that i have with like blast overall is it's like how are you not gonna put blast nfts on blur day one yep they just rushed it out they 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 saw the market picked up and they just put it out essentially Bl uh, uh blur blast or like yeah, I don't think that's the case. I, they always had said May 24th. Or yeah, they said May or not May. Um, um, yeah. March 24th. Oh. Did they? The, the airdrop is I, May. I don't I don't think I don't know. It, it, they had said March or whenever it was and 24 and then or no, it wasn't March. It was was it February? Yeah, February. Um, it was February 24 and then we were all waiting on the 24th and they're like, "Oh no, we meant 2024." And then, uh, but no, no, it was always the plan, but just, I guess they weren't ready. Uh, maybe a time to buy blast NFTs could be, could be agree with Ash on, on the blast thing element market who that that's their, uh, yeah, that's the only marketplace you could trade on right now. And it, it kind of crashed uh, a couple projects did do good though. Do gaming projects. I mean, crypto Valley did good back did good because they're legit projects. Uh, but some of the ones that won the blast contest were really questionable. Like, Yeah. Um, so yeah, dude, to answer your question, I have no idea when revolving games is launching Saku monsters, dude. Um, I really hope it does well. Uh, I really like the team. I mean, I, I've met them IRL. Uh, I had a call with them this week. I'm looking forward to their phase two to launch. They have some really cool stuff they're rolling out and I'm just really excited for the future of that game. Uh, I, I think they're going about it the right way. It feels like they targeted web two with, by being on the app store. Uh, and they have a lot of users. I know people are farming the airdrop, but like I've seen a lot of their plans and i'm really excited for the future um of what they have going but like don't expect anything in in you know this month or next month or anything uh they're launching their their thing saku app is so bad um i think when you you can't do herds right the the way they had it was they had a pop-up and everybody would would open the app at the same time no app can handle that at all so uh you can't you can't have that uh, what they needed to do was regions or something like, dude, I'd be on my phone. I'd get the notification. I'd click it and I'd have to shut my phone or, or shut my the app, reopen it. And then I'd be like, oh, you're only 800th now when I could have been like third. Um, so that's not them. That's just the, the technology. Um, but uh, it's definitely going to be fixed for, for the future. Like the team's expanded. They're doing a lot. I'm expecting a lot out of them. Um, is it too late to buy Kibby NFT to get rewarded? To get rewarded? No. But for the price, I mean, you're buying now at 1.5. These were much lower. But I mean, dude, I bought, uh, I, I'm holding seven right now. I bought between 0.8 and 1 ETH um, because you're going to get airdrop 62,000 tokens. Their highest raise is at 5 cents. Uh, if it went to 20 cents, that'd be 275 mil FDV, um, which would mean every NFT is airdropped 13K with a 25% unlock according to the image they post. I don't know if that's going to be legit, but according to the image, so dude, I'm holding my seven and I'm going to hold, unless we go to like, you know, five ETH, then I'll probably, I'm going to take profits on some of these, but um, I'm holding for the airdrop, at least at these prices, because the airdrop is just going to pay for this and you get access to, to the best terms for their investment round. Um, like I'm seeing, you know, I saw the deals in syndicates. We had it in mind, Wizards Cap, and I'm just, like, you know, I have the NFT. I'm just going to get the better 15% at TGE and uh, no cliff, I think it was, or a shorter cliff. I'm in uh, Kibby IDO. I, dude, I think it's going to do well. So I think that was a good play. Uh, not financial advice. Did you know about Bloodloop Airdrop? I did not. For their NFT holders? Um, I know we're past the hour. Ash, if you got to go, let me know. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just... Okay, I'm just, okay. Uh, okay. I'm just, uh, <laughs> 
No, I didn't. I see you typing. I'm like, did he DM me on on did he DM me on Discord? No, I didn't. Uh, I did blood loop too. I didn't see anything about an airdrop, but I do know that Becker tweets about blood loop. So moon it. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, is there spots? Uh, what's required to enter WizCap? Um, we have a website. I didn't. Don't. I won't promote the website because it's not linked to the application. It's an application, sir. But there's it's strict criteria. Like you have to have money, a certain <laughs> amount of money to invest. Uh, sorry, Bar. I wasn't trying to say Parker doesn't have money, but like you have to meet you have to meet certain protocols. Like, how, what's your appetite for investment? Like, how much money do you have? We're looking for you know founders, uh, KOLs, notable people in the space. It doesn't mean there's not room for the retail, but our group is only as good as the members in it. And you know when projects look at us, especially as the bull picks up and VCs start taking away our deal flow, because we're going to get refunded on some of these deals. Um. So like we need to be careful. So we're really, there's no fee. It's hand selected. So it's, it's hand selected. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to call you brokey. Um, that, was, that was actually really funny. I yeah, will send I mean, you the application, sir. Uh, but the thing with like a lot of these investments is that people, people want to get in on investment rounds. And when they, when they are op- offered to groups, if groups aren't able to fill, it's like a bad look like on that, on that group. So it's like obviously um, like the risk appetite for sending for rounds like this has to be pretty high. Like I already I will say for myself that I already have 30 to 40 grand that has been sent out in the past like couple like days. <laughs> um, and and there's like more that just keeps coming up. And it's just like I'm I'm aping like pretty much everything. And we have to be careful because I, I I think both of us are doing a lot of games and we got to make sure we get like, you know, other play AI or infrastructure and stuff like that. Because right now it's all games. Well, I sent um, you that Bitcoin L2 thing. We should talk about that off screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will. Uh, but no, uh, sorry, Parker, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. But I meant like that our ticket size is 2,500 typically minimum or 5K. So, you know, I look at some of the applications and people, their whole portfolio is like 10 cam. Like you shouldn't be doing these deals, dude. You're, you're risking so much on something that's going to take a while to pay out. Um, but yeah, we have criteria, uh, filling tickets isn't the problem, but it's also the minimum amount and then how they treat it. You know, we want members who aren't just going to nuke the chart in one day. You know, they're not going to just dump the whole thing They They understand responsible selling. They're going to support the project, um, on Twitter and all that. So that's that's kind of we have like weird criteria when it comes to to picking and we pick as a team. A lot of people just think that I'm gonna just get them in, uh, but we, we pick as a team. Kibby elixir shards. Uh, so I, I assume you meant Somo, maybe not, uh, maybe Sodo, and that's something. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people are hyped, I guess, because of Portal too, uh, with the Somo. Uh, but gotta look at the terms. Mocha announced they will launch their launch. They're doing their own launch pad. Um. I guess it makes sense. I mean, they work with a lot of projects. Yeah, Somo, that's what you meant. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing, I saw I saw somebody posted like, I think they're doing pre-sale codes too for communities for Mocha. So I got to figure sick. out. I saw it, but I don't know if it's legit. So I saw a form for a random community um, and it got leaked. <laughs> so everybody's filling it out. <laughs> Anna Mocha, they're, and, they're, and the, what they're doing should be at the top highest priority of what you focus on when it comes to trying to get into a round or pre-sale or something like that, in my opinion, I, I feel like that, what? 350 mil, 350 mil FTV, dude. It's rough. I think Animoca can, I think it could literally be a $5 billion token. True. I think that I but literally it, think, I, but I break even on day one, you need more than five bill, dude. You need more than, you need seven bill to break even on day one. Why is it only 5% on TG? Yeah. I believe yeah, so. That That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> that but we don't. Wait, wait, we don't need to break even on day one. If you break even on in two three months, that's still great. Yeah, but your I crypto's still, not going to two x in the next two months. I don't. I don't think so. This might sound crazy, but I quite literally think that Animoca, their coin, could be a five to ten billion dollar, if not more. If we're talking about full bull run, like Bitcoin goes to one hundred fifty k. I think that like the Animoca token could go to like 15 to 20 bill easy. Is but you're that not crazy? saying launch, like, you're saying right? running up. You're saying running up. 
I'm yeah, I'm not saying like on launch. Well, it depends on what I talk about on launch, sir. <laughs> Everything's gonna go to bill. I'm right. talking about on launch. I want to make my money back on day one. On launch, I think that it could open at like five. I this is straight out of my ass, dude. Like I don't know this, but th we're talking about five bill day one, and then when Becker pumps it to the moon and the bull run and everything gaming goes up, I think that it would be the number one gaming token, that, and like for sure. I think it's number one on the list for gaming tokens, and I think it hits 20 bill minimum. Clip it. I could be so wrong about that. I don't know about number one on gaming. Dude, there's infrastructure plays that, that are going to be number one, right? You're talking like you're, you're removing all the blockchains and stuff, and you're just talking about like... Animoca is literally invested in every single game that matters. Yeah, I guess, but... I'm look. I'm bullish on it. If they're watching, please. I want your presale. Okay, I'm not trying to uh, to shit on it. I'm but... posting this to Twitter, bro. <laughs> I'm literally gonna post this, and then I'm gonna be like, <laughs> somebody DM me. I need. It. Also, I did see something. I don't know if this is true. How much of the token allocation for Mocha does like the NFTs get? I'm not sure. I'd have to look into their docs. Somebody said that it was fifty percent. How much? Fifty percent of the tokens go to the NFT holders. That could be total, like it sounds like a lot. First of all, uh, second of all, maybe it's news. maybe it's like their entire. Remember they had that list at one point of like every project. Didn't they have a sale of some? I forget what it was. You can get some right. points or something, and it's like it was a list of like you know, ApeCoin was on there and Board Apes and every project they've invested in. So maybe you know, not just for Mocha holders, but for like their entire portfolio. Um, yeah, that would be. That would be bad. But yeah, we'll look more into this. I need to use it. Dan says 50% and it'll be a slow bleed. So maybe it's like 50% over five years. Do you guys trade Forex or crypto? Uh, you don't need to spam, sir. I'll see your comments. <laughs> uh, I guess it gives me more engagement. So that's fine. Uh, I do not trade Forex. I, I trade crypto though, but not uh, Forex. But Ash has to use the restroom. Um, <laughs> we're 20 minutes over. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, thank you. Every single Friday, I got to figure out what I'm going to do when I'm I'm traveling in Dubai. I know Ash, you did it in Japan, so I guess I got to match your effort. But it's yeah. literally in the middle of like one of the biggest events, so I got to figure that out. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for watching. We are here every Friday. Uh, we also post videos and stuff, so make sure to check out our content. Um, that's it for the outro. Peace and stream. <laughs>